Hi, I'm Mark Donovan from HomeEditionPlus.com, and today I'm going to show you how I installed an electric fence um, around my beehive to keep bears from getting into it. So this is my electric fence around my beehive uh, to keep the bears from entering into the beehive. Um, the fence is about 12 feet square, 12 by 12 square, uh, and is comprised of four um, aluminum wire loops uh, going up the fence posts. I'm using T-posts with insulators designed to snap onto the T-posts, and then I'm wrapping the aluminum wire around the insulators, making sure that, that the uh, wires don't touch the T-posts at all, otherwise you wind up shorting out um, the circuit. So at the heart of my electric fence is this DC-based charger. Um, DC meaning it's running off a battery. And what I have here is a 12-volt marine uh, deep cycle battery um, that provides the power to the charger. And the, this particular charger is designed for outputting one joule of energy, and this is sufficient enough for keeping out uh, bears. Um, in addition to the charger and the battery, I have a cutoff switch here that I can use to turn on the electric fence or to turn off the electric fence. Um, what I've done is I've used 14 gauge aluminum wire um, and gone around the, all four posts. I'm using T posts here with insulators put on to them. And I'm using some particular handles designed for electric fences that allow me to um, kind of pull tight the two ends of electric fence. So basically what I've got is in complete, four complete loops of aluminum 14 gauge wire and then they're connected in the back by uh, again 14 gauge wire um, between the four loops and then uh, the hot side of when the switch is closed um, is connected to uh, one of the wires which then winds up powering all the other wires. As you can see a wire comes down from the charger and connects to the positive and negative side of the 12 volt battery. Um, then you actually connect up the fence, in this case the red wire, uh, which is the hot wire, to one side of the switch that I have over here. Um, the green lug that you see is actually tied to ground. And that ground wire um, is coming via an insulated 20 kV volt wire um, down into the ground. I don't know if you can see it, but there are some rods that have been pounded into the ground. I've actually pound two grounding rods in and connect them with connectors. Um, and so basically I've got a ground wire uh, connected into the ground across two ground grounding posts that then that wire feeds up and attaches to the green lug um, on the charger itself. And you need a really good ground system uh, to ensure that you're going to get a nice high voltage um, across the wire when the animal touches it and thus produce the shock. Uh, to protect the charger from the elements, particularly water and snow, um, I'm using, just simply got a, a, an old container that had some chemicals in it, cleaned it out, rinsed it out, and I just slide it over the, the top of the charger, and now it's fully protected from any ice, snow, or water that could um, uh, drip on it. So if you look carefully at the insulator, you'll see that I've wrapped the 14 gauge wire around the end of the insulator a couple times, and I've extended it out about two or three inches and put a loop on it. And that way my handle can clip right onto it. And then on the other side, the, the, the um, connector effectively travels, or conducting choke travels right through the handle. Uh, you connect the other side of the electric fence um, to the other side of the handle, and you basically just continue on one long loop around all four posts, and then back in. And again, I've done this on four separate loops uh, around the entire fence. And then as you can see here, I've connected the four loops together uh, with a common bus wire, if you will. Uh, again, 14-gauge uh, wire. And then connected the fence itself to the high side of the switch um, using this 20 kV insulated uh, aluminum wire. So in my case, again, I used a DC charger. There's AC chargers that plug right into an outlet. And there's also solar uh, chargers. 
Um, I may wind up putting a solar panel next to this thing to charge the battery, um, but for now I'm going to plan on just running it off the DC of this battery. From what I understand, it should last me a good month before I need to charge the battery again. Um, the total cost for such a setup, the charger in this case was $30, uh, but it can be as much as $130. Um, if you buy a solar charge one, it could be a couple hundred dollars. Um, the, the wire, the fence posts, and the switch and everything combined, I probably spent about $150 total, plus about another $80 on the battery. So if you have any reason to put up an electric fence, particularly to keep out larger animals such as bear, and particularly if you've got a beehive in an area where there could be bears, uh, make sure you um, put a nice rugged fence in with um, a thick gauge wire and with sufficient energy, in this case like one joule of output energy, output energy, uh, to ensure that you prevent the bears from being able to penetrate in. I should also comment too, you've noticed I had four loops. One is about a foot off the ground, the other three are uh, within about 30, 40, and about 50 inches off the ground. And the reason for that is, uh, particularly with bears, and their head is usually down and they're kind of sniffing around, so their nose is going to be more likely to hit that bottom fence and jump away. Uh, but in the event that they get a little bit more aggressive or try to reach out, um, they're going to hit the, the upper wires. Other thing too is you want to make sure that your electric fence for your bees is at least three feet away from any side of the, of the um, beehive to make sure a bear doesn't actually reach in and try to grab it and knock off a lid or knock it over. So that's it on installing electric fence. If you have other home improvement questions, make sure to visit homeeditionplus.com today.